Welcome back to the show, Sean here from Insights. And today we're gonna to actually set up some ET200 SPIO to communicate to a CPU. In this case, I chose the S7-1200. The same, it's the same procedure when you're using the 1500, but I'm just impressed that a little, let's say $500 PLC can control distributed IO so easily without having to jump through any hoops like other vendors, small PLCs require you to do. So if you uh, uh, have any uh, thoughts or opinions on that, if you think your vendor, maybe you're not using Siemens, you're using a different vendor and their $500 micro or small PLC is as easy as this, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know that because I don't get a chance to try every single PLC on the market, but I do know some other major vendors, their small $500, $400 ish uh, PLCs cannot add IO like this. So this is a really, I think a really cool feature of the S7-1200 again, if you're using the uh, 1500, then uh, the procedure is going to be absolutely the same. Now today, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, hardware itself today. And I may want to zoom in on this. Let's see here. Let me just pick it up and bring it closer to the camera. You can see there, this is an IM155 6PN ST. So it's slightly different depending on the device you're adding. And uh, so today, in today's video, we're going to add this device and then I'll cover some other Siemens Distributed I.O. in future um, episodes of the course. In any case, I did also want to show you that I have 10 input buttons and I have 10 output pilot lights, and uh, these are 16 in, 16 out. So, um, you know, the extra points I just wired from inputs to outputs. So let's go over to PC and get started with that. Okay, here I'm in a blank S7-1200 program. I'm actually using version 17. Some of these modules would require me to update 16 to actually use them and I didn't want to go through doing that. So I, I just created a brand new project for this S7-1200 like I've done in past videos and um, uh, it's already set up. And what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to come down to online access just so I can go to my network card and update accessible devices. I want to make sure that everything's showing up. Now I have had problems doing this over Wi-Fi. I haven't got down to the bottom of that yet, but if you're on your laptop and you're working on this and you're not auto discovering, try plugging in. I'm sure there's some setting on my Wi-Fi that's causing that, but I have not been able to find out what it is. So in any case, here you can see we have our PLC and then we have this thing, okay? And can't get much information about it, okay? The Profinet device. I just happen to know that it's this device, but it doesn't have an address. It doesn't have a name. Um, and this is how you reset it to factory defaults. So in any case, we could go in here and give it a name and an address. But for now, what I want to do is let's, uh, let's uh, close that down here and let's go. We'll select our PLC again. We'll do online and then we're going to do hardware detection, Profinet devices from network. And we'll start our search here because I've selected these already. And it's looking out on my ethernet for that device. And there it is. I found it right there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I'm going to say, Hey, add that to my project. And the nice thing about doing this is it's not only going to add the interface module, right? It's also going to add the IO module. So I think that's very cool that it goes through and does all of that and, uh, makes it much easier than doing it manually. Okay. This is successful. Everything was added. So let's go ahead and connect them. So I'll sign them together here. Okay, that's done. All right, now let's go look at this guy. Okay, and look, not only brought in the Enface module, but both I.O. modules, and they're set to the right firmware version and so on. So that's really cool. All right, so in any case, let's see for the address here. Let me double click on that and go to the address. And we're going to change it. We don't, I don't like that address. We're going to give it two and the PLC was two twelve, So we'll do two thirteen as this is the first one we're adding. Excellent. And then it's going to give it this default name of IO device one. Okay. Now I'm not going to use that. So we're going to call it IO device underscore ET 200 SP underscore one. Okay. Cause we're going to have a lot of different devices. As a matter of fact, I can probably take the word device out of there. Just IO ET200. As a matter of fact, let's call it DIO, distributed IO, ET200SP1, because we'll have more to add as the days go on. Okay. So that's all good. I'm going to copy that out of there. 
Okay. And with that done, let's go ahead and download it and see what happens. So I'm going to select the PLC here. I'm going to click on download. Okay. Start search. There it is. Let's load it in. Yeah, go ahead and save that default selection. Okay, oh, problem. Password must not be empty. That's something with uh, version 17. So let me go ahead and select full access, no protection, because I'm just working on the workbench here. And let me select the PLC again, and we'll try the download again. Okay, and that's done. Let's go online. And we have an error here with the I.O. See what it is. Diagnostic status. Module exists is faulty. Okay, the buffer here. I.O. device not found. The D.I.O. E.T. 200 S.P. And the reason for that is because the actual device itself, while the PLC can give it its IP address because it's Profinet, we have to assign the device at a minimum, assign the device a name. So let me come down here and let me just update my accessible devices again. Okay. And I'm going to go to that device. And I'm going to go to functions. Assign name. Now I could assign the IP address as well, but just to show you that the PLC will do that. I'm just going to put in the name. I think I still have it in the keyboard buffer. Yes, I do. Assign name. Okay, that's done. And look, we got all greens here. Okay, if I go back to general. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to update accessible devices. You can see it already says DIO over here. And now, look, I can see more information about the module here. Okay. It'll bring in the article number. It'll bring in the version. Okay. If I go to assign IP address, it did get the IP address from the controller, which is cool. Different than a lot of other PLCs with the fact that you're, you're signing the devices, not IP addresses, but names, Profinet names. And then the PLC will assign the address, which I think is kind of cool. Um, in any case, we can see we're green across the board here, right? And so um, we could actually go and write some programs. Before we do that, I want to create some tags. I'm just going to go ahead and all, go offline. And then I'm going to open up the distributed I.O. here. I just find it easier to add the tags this way. And what I'll do is I'll create a bunch of tags. I'm going to do PB uh, 1 through 10 and then PL 1 through 10. And I'll fast forward the video and be right back. Okay, now that I got all those tags in there, let's go ahead and create a program. And the program will basically be if I press the button, turn on the pilot light, just a nice little test program, and uh, probably duplicate this nine more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'll just come in here and I'll put in, well, let's delete this guy. And we'll put in PB01 and PL01. And now I'll just do this and I'll speed up the video. Okay, with that done, I also resaved the project with a new name called Done instead of Start. And now let's go ahead and download. I'll select the PLC here. I'll click on download. And we'll go ahead and load it into the controller there. I know with Siemens, they call them PLCs or CPUs. With Rockwell, they call them controllers. Um, you know, the, to me, it's all the same, right? But yeah, each vendor has its own nomenclature they like to use. So I try to use it, but sometimes they mess up like that. So let's go ahead and uh, mix them up. So let's go ahead and go online and monitor. And there we go. 
All right, now if this is working, when I press the button, the corresponding pilot light should work. So let's go back here. And you can see everything's in the green. So all the firmware revs and all that are the same. If you get the, like if I said it was a version 3 and it was a version 4, I would have blinking lights. It would tell me, hey, the firmwares don't match up. In any case, um, yep, so far so good. Okay. All right, so success there with uh, getting that added to the 1200 as distributed I.O. Now, this actual unit here will be available for anybody who comes into the automation school for in-person training. Plus, there'll be a much deeper lesson of this added to my S7 course. So if you thought that I went through it too quickly or if you like some of the background or more information about what I'm doing here, of course, that'll be in the course uh, you know, in a few weeks. But in any case, I did want to show you that, and I got more of these to show. Um, this episode is actually was sponsored by Siemens. They not only sent in the hardware, but they sponsored it to make it ad-free. So thank you, Siemens. But in any case, I think the big takeaway here, if you've never used Siemens before, is that um, Profinet name. So even in the Profinet manual, they say they chose to use names instead of IP addresses and allow the, actually allow the, the PLC to send all the devices, their IP addresses based on the project. And they just decided to use names because it was easier, they thought. And so that's right out of their own manual. And I think it's pretty cool. If you don't know that going in, you're like, how do I set its IP address? You know, you have to know how to search for devices that are on the network if you have it already. Um, and even if you got a brand, you know, you do all the programming, you download to the PLC, you still have to give this guy, commission it with a name um, to get it to work. And I don't know any way around that. If you're a Siemens guru and you know a way around that, let me know. But as far as I read in the official Profinet, updated Profinet manual, um, you have to sign each device a name. Then the PLC can actually go out and give it its IP addresses. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, again, everything we did would have been the same with the S7-1500. I'm just using the 1200 because it's an inexpensive PLC that configures just like it's big brother and i kind of wish all vendors had that little 500 dollars plc or 400 dollars plc depending on which model the cost of price changes that could use the same distributed io without really many restrictions that the bigger unit can or could use and i know um there's some differences we talked about before the s7 1200 g2 versus the original g1 um and you know um, in my course, I go through all the details on, you know, processor or CPU to CPU comparisons and how much RT and IRT uh, capabilities they have. But in any case, I think for uh, this episode, that'll give you an idea how to do this. And in the future episodes, I have different types of interface modules from Siemens. I think I showed you some of them in the last episode on the ET200 SP. So we'll be setting those up as well, as well as an ET200 SP a CPU, an actual PLC that sits on, think if you're a Rockwell guy, think of Flex Logix, right? Or maybe now Compact Logix where it sits on the 1769 IO. Well, uh, Siemens makes an ET200 SP CPU that's based on the S7-1500, which I think is so cool. So that'll be what we cover. And then next week we have some uh, on machine or machine mount IO we'll be going through as well, taking a look at it, you know, uh, going through the slide deck and then uh, setting them up. So with that, I just want to wish you all good health and happiness. Thank you again for tuning in. And until next time, my friends, peace.